which is being spent through the private sector. Some of it well, and some of it will always be continue to be held, uh, uh, to, to, to be paid through the private sector. But many of it is not a good provision at all. And we believe that we need to reverse the problems of the Blair years, when this council, like every other council, was forced through a so-called best value regime to transfer effectively uh, its services uh, to the private sector. That's what we need to do, look at bringing those services uh, back in-house. And lastly, my old mayor, just to look at the appalling system by which we collect money. We believe, as a party, and I think most of the people over there believe as well, that the biggest amounts of tax should be paid by those with the broader shoulders with the biggest income. But that's not what happens under a property-based system. The current rental levels on which the council tax bandings are based were set in 1991 levels, in 1993. They were supposed to be upgraded to 1998 levels in the year 2000. As I've remarked before, and I, I, I will be finishing on time, uh, as we have uh, remarked before, 15% of Liverpool didn't even exist as a built up environment, and particularly on the river uh, when those rent levels uh, were set. We need to revise the system and we need to have a fair system such as the EU uses to redistribute money. My Lord Mayor, I'll close on, on this note. At the last meeting, a Labour councillor told us how angry she was that we were spending time looking at 100, how £100,000 was going to be spent. Well, the problem in Liverpool, my Lord Mayor, is they didn't listen to my old mum. My old mum used to say, look after the pennies, and the pounds will look after themselves. The trouble has been in Liverpool for more than a decade, but no one looked at the penny or pounds, and that's why we're in the mess we are today. My Lord Mayor, I'm here. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Makinson. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. I'm seconding this addendum and I'm voting against the budget resolution because, frankly, I have no confidence in the ability of this Labour administration to spend money properly or on the right priorities. For instance, we have a capital programme that pours even more into city centre roads while continuing to underfund road safety schemes in the rest of the city. Just in my ward, there are two dangerous junctions, on Menlove Avenue and Mano Avenue, where a child was hit last month. We are told that fixing these junctions will cost 1.5 million each, and they are at the top of the council's priority list. They've been at the top of that priority list for the past six years. <coughs> my constituents are already appalled at the 70 million that's been spent on the Strand in Lime Street. But they will be dismayed to see a further six million is being committed to be thrown at the Strand over the next two years, while school children and residents take their lives in their hands. We're not convinced by the Green Bin Savings Assumptions. At the Finance and Resources Committee, both in October and last week, I asked what allowance had been made for increased costs of removing fly tipping and the payment leaves that residents will stop collecting. How much extra we will end up paying in penalties when we fail to reach the 51% recycling target in 2025? The answer I received in October and again last week was we will send you that information while I'm still waiting. And we expected to vote for a budget without knowing the consequences. Just as members opposite last year voted for one-stop shop closures, only to be shocked later on to discover that they voted to close facilities in their own wards. We continue to support the administration in demanding more resources for our city from central government. But that job is made much harder when we go to government asking 
for instance, for 4 million to tackle homelessness, and then months later decide to give it back to this government. My Lord Mayor, whether you're a household or a council, it's always a good idea to have something set aside for a rainy day. But at a time when our residents are having to choose between heating and eating, I doubt many households will be doubling their own savings accounts. Yet we're being asked to create people paying more council tax, not to protect services, but to put an extra 20 million in the council's piggy bank, 10 million this year. Why is this happening? Well, the SIPFA review highlights the woeful assessment of the authority's financial management. The city is worse at collecting its debts than other core cities. We are continuing to be fleeced by private sector children's homes charging us more than a quarter of a million pounds per child. SIPFA have told officers to double the reserves, largely because they do not have confidence in this Labour administration's financial management. My Lord Mayor, people are struggling with rising food and fuel bills. I cannot look my constituents in the eye and tell them they are receiving value for money from council tax they are already paying. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I've got a list of five councillors who want to speak, so I'll start with Councillor Mumby. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I always enjoy listening to uh, Councillor Kemp or Channing Clint Eastwood, as a man with no shame. As he's an older member of the council like me, uh, I fear he may be suffering from amnesia, but I'm not. So I want to take you back a bit to the past. Um, Richard, you did not condemn the Tory Lib Dem cuts. You defended them. Section 106 you referred to. Now I know Councillor Hatton will recall how I worked with him and Councillor Robertson Collins when I took over responsibility for that. And we found that under the previous Lib Dem administration, there was no mechanism in place, no officers responsible for collecting Section 106. And there was 10 to 15 million uncollected data from the Liberal Democrat administration, some of which we could never get back because of the time that's elapsed. Because of the measures we put in place and the officers we recruited, that was reduced substantially. So how dare you mention Section 106 because we fixed that problem. <laughs> then we got onto homes for a pound and sites for a pound. Now that is utterly shameless. Look at the housing market with your scheme. Councillor Kemp and his party handed over to developers with no overage clause, with no clawback clause, thousands of sites in the city. Thousands of sites. And we got no money back from it. Gleason's in my own world. We built hundreds of thousands of properties which they made money off. We made no money on that. We got nothing for the land, nothing for the scheme. We were left with vast tenants in parts of Everton and Anfield where nothing happened. Labour got houses built on that to get in council tax. So the argument that we were improved is a nonsense frankly, compared to what your lot were like. I won't go into scandals like the Windsor, the Windsor development, uh, which is absolutely disgusting, derelict for years. Or Brad George Street, frankly, which you gave to Urban Splash with no overage clause, with no clawback, which is responsible for being delicate. Shame on you, shame on you. How dare you attack us for that? Finally, when you talk about privatisation outsourcing, I was there when you outsourced tens of millions of pounds of services which cost us money. I'm proud of the role that I had other councillors play, and other council had some council mentioned others, in bringing back services in the environmental sector, which saves us millions of pounds. The reason we lose money to the private sector in adult and children's social care is because your party privatised it. So how dare you attack Labour for that? We're trying to fix some of the mess you left us. You had a period in power when there were hundreds of millions of pounds flowing into the city from a Labour government. We had a situation where there's hundreds of millions of pounds flowing out of this city thanks to your party and its Tory party. So, of course, there's always mistakes in administrations, mate. Nobody can accuse me of having been an uncritical fan of the previous mayor. You know, that's not exactly a secret. But for the Lib Dems to give us lectures in fiscal prudence is the most disgraceful dishonesty I've ever heard in the show. So I'll be opposing that a minute.
there. Uh, notwithstanding annual budget cuts, which would also have happened under a Labour government post-2010, this council is plagued by inefficiency, mismanagement and waste. Whether it's simple things like filling a pothole again and again and again. Or perhaps the one and a half million pounds and rising overspend on Lime Street. Or even the letting off of developers of promised Section 106 money. Money earmarked for the communities we all serve. The final insult, Lord Mayor, is the many hundreds of thousands of pounds the people of Liverpool are paying the commissioners trying to remedy your incompetence, your inability to lead, and your corrupt practices as highlighted by the Callum report. A shameful record of being in power for 12 years, 12 years airbrushed from history. Even when this Labour administration was offered money by the government, like the £4 million towards a new home and shelter, you failed to deliver and sent it back. You couldn't make it up. So, what's the big budget balancing brainwave from an administration we know has wasted more than £130 million? The geniuses, this lot here, who run our city, have come up with, wait for it, a green bin tax. Even with 100% take up, it will claw back just £1.7 million. When I raised this issue at the Neighbourhoods Committee on the 17th of November, I was told that although it was a contentious issue, and you can say that again, contentious alright, it couldn't be discussed at that meeting as it was a budget proposal out for consultation and my party would get its chance at a later date. Well, I guess that time is now. So here are the results of our consultation with residents. You'll be interested in this. Less than one in five said they would pay. Less than one in five. More than 40% said they'd put, stop using their green bin and put more in their purple bin. So with less than 20% paying, this service will be unviable. Perhaps that's Labour's intention. If 42% put green waste in their purple bin, this will ramp up the amount the council pays in landfill charges and do little to improve the already embarrassing recycling rate of 26%. This policy will not work and sends out entirely the wrong message about the environmental attitudes of the council particularly after unanimously declaring a climate emergency almost three years ago. What we need is a forward-thinking, clear plan to address this issue, not an ill judge scheme likely to cost money, not save it. Lord Mayor, history shows that whenever the Labour Party runs this city for an extended time, it brings it to its knees. Next year, the people of Liverpool will have an opportunity to show what they think of Labour's record over the last 12 years, including 10 years with an all-powerful elected mayor forced upon us. I'm confident that this undemocratic and dangerous experiment will soon be rejected by the people of Liverpool. I'm also confident that they won't forgive the incompetence or forget the shameful practices which have dogged this Labour Council and embarrassed our city so much as a result. Finally, Lord Mayor, the reality is that only the Liberal Democrats, as we did so effectively before, can restore, can restore the council's reputation, responsibly manage the fi and let me go and listen to this, responsibly manage the finances of this city, address the huge challenges we face in the future, and ensure best value, best value for the council taxpayers of Liverpool. Thank you, my dear man. Councillor Brown. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I actually um, hadn't planned. Oh, which councillor? Uh, okay, do you want to be there?
this uh, in a neutral way. Uh, thank you, my Lord Mayor. Um, I have to say, I'm so overwhelmed by the uh, Liberal Democrat budget, it doesn't amend anything that we were told about the stories of all our yesterdays. So, can we actually focus back onto the actual budget that's before us? Um, page 251. I do share um, some concerns expressed. In this report, it says we've got to achieve a 55% recycling rate by 2025. And it's also suggesting that we're currently delivering 31% on recycling. What I cannot comprehend is if we charge for green bins, have without doubt some abuse of green bins of recycling materials being put into the purple bins or even the blue bins, or trashed on the streets, how that will achieve the 20% shortfall we already know is there. It just doesn't make common sense. And I know when, in fairness, uh, Councillor Corbett uh, met with cells and we discussed quite a few issues about derrick houses and land project rights, and I appreciate that dialogue. But we have been asking, my colleague Jer Jerry Dunn has been asking, how are we going to achieve that improvement? I'm going to be honest, we hear about the Mayor of Triple Lock. Well, I'm going to say, when it's been coming to delivering local service, it's the Mayor of Triple Letdown. We have had communal bin schemes which have had a proven benefit of improving recycling rates by 28%. And okay, that will only happen to a street's not already in the scheme. Already that scheme is in some parts of my ward and our neighbours in Anfield a year or two years behind schedule. If we wanted to achieve the improvement in recycling rates, then we would be putting more money into the human bin scheme to help deliver the recycling, not charging for bins. And we're told a lot about the benefit of the commissioners. Um, well, you know, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't going to call about the uh, proposition, but we accepted where we were at. But I have to say, we're talking about the benefits of social inclusion and employment of local people. Well, I can tell you, in my correspondence to the city officers, who can't make it, um, I'm endlessly complaining that local builders who are developing small sites, the council said, were not housing viable, are having the transactions held up or not progressed. That is absolutely disastrous to local employment of local builders. It's also disastrous because those small derelict sites are the sites in which people dump in but we have having to clean up. And those sites are used for arson and crime that affects the neighbours around them. And far from progress being made, things have got worse. The council's response 
to develop as a small genetic site is going into paralysis. Our commissioners have not added value to the process, but added to paralysis to the process. And that's the way I see it. We're told about the environment. Yeah, we will all agree on the environment. Yeah. I won't say anything about how wonderful the West Derby congestion scheme did in raising the benefits of air pollution. But I have one young lad in our board who lost his grandparents due to COVID. And over nine months ago, he wrote to council officers with my support saying he'd like to plant a tree in the local park as a memorial to the family. We have written to council officers six times about planting trees. The council has got money set aside for a dynamic 28 trees in Bishop Park. That's a real dynamic benefit. And we're still going to one year later. And a family can't pull a memorial tree in Yushu Park nine months later. The mayor would triple lock, it's a triple letdown, and this budget is too. Council Gibbons. Thanks, my lady mayor. I mean, I'll, I'll give Councillor Klein one bit of uh, praise, and that he's always entertaining in the way Mr. Bean's entertaining. I mean, honest to God, what, what an absolute kerfuffle that is. How dare you talk about the credit that the Lib Dems have given the city when they were once judged the worst council in Britain? The chutzpah of after the years of austerity to be able to say, oh, it's just a passing fancy. Year after year, they ground people in this city into the dust. You take responsibility for that. And this really is rich when you turn on the sarcasm, and some of the comments you've made in the past about female members, I just think you ought to look at yourself in the mirror. Now let's get one thing straight, I'm going to talk about the budget. The measures in this budget are not savings, they are cuts. Cuts which in the last 12 years, if they've taught us anything, cost us more very often than they save us in the long term. And why are we facing these painful cuts, I'll come back to the Lib Dems. We're here because of Tory austerity, propped up and facilitated during the coalition by the Lib Dems. Apologise for it now, and never forget at the time you didn't apologise for it. The cynicism of the U-turn on tuition fees still lives us politically in this country. The Tories have told, I've got no support for Tony Blair, if you know that. The Tories have told £465 million out of our city. That's where the main blame lies. On a government that wasted 37 billion on a failed test and trace plan, 9 billion on useless PE, 4.3 billion writing off COVID corruption fraud losses. Much of this money went into the ever up more of Tory donors. And that said, throwing up our hands and saying there's nothing we can do will never be good enough. There are always things we can do. Alternative proposals were put forward during the consultation. One by one, they were rejected out of hand. The budget is essentially unchanged since the start of the consultation process. At the same time, commissioners have had their mouths stuffed with silver, with a 50% backdated pay rise. But we're told that the commissioners and the audit body sit there wouldn't accept the proposed alternatives. We were wedged into a fiscal straitjacket. We're told that reserves have to rise 50% from 20.7 million to 30.7 million. This is sit for advice. It is not an order, it's not an instruction, it's not something that's inevitable, and there are other authorities with larger populations that are running lower reserves. We can make political decisions. We can afford a portion of the reserves that we can use where need is most pressing. We can do things differently. We're told it has to be this way because of exceptional circumstances, like emerging from COVID. I tell you what, since the, the Tories of Thatcher and the crashes of the past, when did we ever not have exceptional circumstances in the country? Look what we have been through in a roller coaster of austerity and attacks on the working class. Isn't the 
need for adult or children's social care and disability. A, a network for libraries in North Liverpool. Aren't these things that we need to defend always as exceptional circumstances? And this situation is not going to go away. Now, the, if you talk about the libraries, Jane, I can see you looking at me. We asked, and Tom Crown put the question, is it going to be subject year on year to a competitive tendering process? And Harry Doyle said yes. Said yes. So, you, well that, it's limited in the, in the Finance Select Committee. It, anybody who's here at the Finance Joint Select Committee, that's what was said. And Tom knows it, he's sitting right in front of me. This situation is not going away. If we don't find an alternative, we'll be implementing Tory cuts year after year. The numbers are going up. We have to have a different approach. Liverpool's communities are at breaking point. As a matter of conscience, I am not prepared to vote for cuts that will make life harder for the people I represent. And for that reason, I and others are going to vote against this budget. Thank you, Lord Mayor. When the Lib Dems ran the city in 2008, the Lib Dem Council was rated the worst North Council in the country due to the Lib Dems have weak taxpayers' money. Thanks to the Labour government, the Lib Dem Council had more funding to spend each year. In 2010, this council had £465 million more than we have today. The Labour government gave millions of pounds to our city for building the schools for the future. Then, when the Lib Dems got elected into government with the Tories, they scrapped that funding. £350 million scrapped. It was this Labour Council that built new schools across the city. Councillor Kent was responsible for the business case. The Lib Dem leader, Warren Bradley, said that the Lib Dems had ripped the heart out of the Liverpool communities. It was this Labour Council that that the Lib Dems left to revitalise that community. So we don't need any lectures from the Lib Dems.
introduce and how successful or unsuccessful they have been. So for them to stand up and say that, well, it will be a failure. Well, it wasn't a failure in Widow. Just go down there, St. Helens. Our proposals were on, based on 33% uptake. That's, we need in 45,000 houses to take up this service in order for us to meet that 1.7. Now, it's your job if you truly want this to succeed and have a, enough money in there to encourage people to take up those who can afford it. You said should shoulder <coughs> the most amount. Well, let's see what if you believe in that and see what you can do in your own communities. I'd like to say, you know, a big thank you to every person who's really truly engaged in our consultation, to the trade unions, to our members, to our party who have been really um, behind us all the way and challenging us. And before you, we are going to be presented as the only option and that is it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Whilst I will not stifle debate in any way, I would ask you to stick to the points that you're making, try not to repeat what's just been said and move forward. I've got four more speakers down. So, Councillor Conception. <coughs> Thank you, Lord Mayor. Yeah, I'm going to speak against the amendment. Uh, Councillor Kemp started his uh, discussion, his debate to the Chamber tonight. And he said, how have we arrived at this situation? And I'd just like to point out to Councillor Kemp, we've arrived at this situation because of him and his party. We joined the Tories in 2010 and introduced austerity to this country, the likes that we've never seen in living memory. It's been estimated that if Liverpool would have had the average cut of other cities in the UK, we would have had £80 million more to spend each year. If you had that up £80 million over five years, we would have had another £400 million to spend. So really, when the Liberal Democrats were in coalition with the Tories, and Danny Alexander was uh, Osborne's first day and now, we suffered the worst cuts, you know, this uh, country seen, and we've, we've suffered ever since then. Councillor Clark mentioned, and others mentioned, Section 106, that we give way to developers and we just let them get away with, with what they want. Well, that isn't the case. We have a robust system in this city that's based on the government guidelines that we need to adhere to. And we have an independent consultant who advises us accordingly. And no Section 106 money has been written off, and we still continue to pursue that, and we will continue to pursue that. This budget, and I've been a councillor since 2010, but I was also a councillor from there in the 90s. And it's always been a problem. In Liverpool, we have never had a Labour council with a Labour government. But that party has, and he squandered the money. And the seen as Councillor Barrington has just said, the lone star state we were under the Lib Dems. We should hang our heads in shame, you know. In relation to the Green Bay, it's something that we wouldn't want to do. But obviously, we're faced with really difficult decisions. What are the alternatives? Shut our children's centres, our measure centres, throw our staff on the dole. We're not prepared to do that. We're not going to play politics with people's lives and the services that we provide to the most vulnerable people in our city. Vote against the amendment and vote for the budget here, moved by the mayor. Thank you, Lord. Councillor Doyle, then Councillor Simon. Thank you, Lord Mayor. There's been lots of points made this evening, but I think there's some figures that need to be brought to attention. To Councillor Kemp and Councillor Klein and his colleagues, 
Do you know how many Lib Dem controlled councils there are? 27. Do you know how many of those 27 charged for waste collection? 22. Do you know what the average yearly sub subscription costs are in those 22 councils? £50. Do you know how many of those 22 councils provide a discount for their most vulnerable, perhaps a discount like we are, which would be £5 for eight months, or even under the support scheme, they wouldn't have to pay? Do you know how many? Five. Not, and not very generous discounts either. And also to other colleagues in the room, I want to make it very clear that voting against this budget is voting against supporting the Liverpool Citizen Support Scheme. Voting against this budget is voting against MNF. Voting against this budget is voting against supporting leisure's library centres staying open. A vote against this budget is reckless. A vote against this budget puts jobs, council jobs, in danger. Your communities did not vote you in on those platforms. struggled 
you know, sort of to recruit. But the, now they are recruiting staff. But as I said, it's a market out there. And I just think that people need to look at what it says in the amendment. This is about the amendment, not about who's better or worse. It doesn't add anything to this budget. Perhaps the stuff around recognising the budget formulas, recognising some of the stuff. But it's not saying, you know, how we, how we could have met some of those challenges. We have got to make, and it's not just because commissioners are in. Of course we're being overseen. Year on year, since 2010, we've set a legal budget, and those budgets have been scrutinised. And I take offence when you talk about people being corrupt over here. I sat on that cabinet. I have not got a corrupt phone in my body. I would challenge you to show where I have been corrupt and where some of my colleagues have been corrupt. <laughs> Thank you. 